Hey there, crafty friends. My name is Misty. Welcome to Gleesman Designs. In today's video, I have combined 10 of the most popular Christmas DIY projects that I have made here on my channel, and I have put them all into one video. So I hope you enjoy, and let's jump right in. For this DIY, I will be using two of these glass bowls from Dollar Tree. They have them now in two different sizes, and they stack on top of each other perfect. You will also need one of these build your own snow globes from Dollar Tree. You can remove the bottom and the inner part and also the paper. This is going to be the head to our snowman. And as you can see, as you can see, they are all three different sizes. So again, that is also perfect as well. Next, I'm going to use some fairy lights that I got off of Amazon. They are like 10 feet long. Super, super great deal. I believe I got like a 30 pack for around 20 something dollars. I will have these linked down below in the description box. One thing I really love about them lights is the very, very small, tiny battery pack. You can use Dollar Tree lights, but the battery pack, battery pack is a lot larger. As you could see, I just took the fairy lights and kind of smashed them down so that they were flat and tangled them up a little bit. And then I'm taking more of that Halloween fake spider web and just taking a tiny bit and fluffing it out so that it is nice and what's the word I'm looking for? Almost see-through in a way. You don't just you just don't want to have any clumps where it won't be as see-through. You know how it can kind of bunch up and be darker in certain spots. I, I hope you get what I'm saying. E either way, now you're going to place your lights down inside and then I take another very tiny small amount of that spider web again and I flatten it out just so that it is a really thin layer over top so that you don't really see as much of the wiring on those very lights. Then I take some of the Dollar Tree faux snow again and I just start placing it down inside the bowl covering over top of that faux spider web and this really gives a nice pretty snowy look. Of course, you guys already know you can use whatever you would like inside of your snowman, but what I'm going to do is use some of these new Dollar Tree trees. At least they are new to me this year, and they are actually really adorable. I love the style of them this year. However, the larger one in the pack, because they do come in different sizes in this pack, and the larger ones are a little bit too tall, so you want to take the two largest ones out and then use the rest of the other sizes. So also, when you're adding your trees down inside, you want to, or if you're not even using trees, you at least want to use something kind of tall like these trees here so that you can cover the wire and by cover it all I mean is I'm placing those trees right in front of where the wire for our lights will and be. I did use my Gorilla Glue hot glue to glue the trees down. Next I'm taking some of this magic mold I do believe it's called from Dollar Tree. You can also get it at Family Dollar or Dollar General I do believe as well and all I'm going to do is make a snowman out of this magic mold. And this is kind of like a air dry foam clay, I guess you could say. And I just take it and roll it in my hands, making a few different size balls until I liked the size. And of course, making a snowman, I did make three different sizes and then I stacked them on top of each other. Once I had my snowman shape, I use a tiny little paintbrush. You could also use a paint pen for this. I use my black chalk paint and I just start painting on his face as well as his buttons on his shirt. You could also paint your snowman's nose on, but I decided to take a little bit more of that magic mold and I just made a little teeny tiny carrot shaped nose and it was super teeny tiny. And once I had the shape and size that I wanted, I just put it right on our snowman where his nose needs to go. And then I use my apple barrel pumpkin colored paint to paint his nose a really pretty orange color. 
Once his little carrot nose was done, I'm going to use some of that fabric that I made the trees with and I just cut a very, very little sliver so that I could make that into his scarf. Now most scarves that I know of have these little frillies at the end, so I just cut little slivers so that it had more of that realistic scarf look. Next I just place it around my snowman's neck how I would like it to be and then I just add some hot glue and glue it down into place. Isn't he just so cute you guys? I wish I had a little hat. I should have made one out of that magic mold but that would have been so adorable. And now that my mini snowman is complete, I add some hot glue onto the bottom and then glue him down in here with the trees and our bottom to our snowman is done and we can work on the second layer, which I use the smaller glass piece from Dollar Tree and I do the same thing with the lights, the spider web, and the snow. Again, that's repetitive and I didn't think you guys would want to watch that all over again. So next I also add the trees. This I did want to show again just because you can also cut these trees down if you would like to to have more sizes I guess you could say. And again you also want to glue them in front of the, the fairy lights so that it will kind of hide the string or the cord from the fairy lights. I also added a few more of these trees to this second part of our snowman than I did the first because I wanted to have kind of like the family is going and picking out their Christmas tree so there is a bunch of little Christmas tree options. I want to add this little truck again so that it looks like they are going and picking out their Christmas tree. Now. Dollar Tree does have these in a Christmas version, but a lot of my Christmas stuff is still packed up and I do have these in the Christmas version, but again, I just, there's no way I'm going to be able to find those right now. So I just took off the pieces to these fall ones and I'm going to turn it into the Christmas one myself. So I take my red chalk paint and I paint the little truck that is green. And I just really worried about like the main truck part. I did leave the top part of the tires green and the tires black, obviously. And then I'm going to use one of these little teeny tiny mini trees. I pull off the bottom of it and I kind of push the bristles down so that I can glue it onto the back of my truck and it will look a little bit more like it is supposed to be there. Of course, if you do have the Christmas little trucks, you can completely skip this part and go to the next step. Now because this little truck is kind of flat, I'm going to take the piece that I took off the bottom of the Christmas tree and I'm just going to add some hot glue on the side and then I glue it to the back tire and you can't even see it, it hides perfectly and it stands our little truck up and now we also have more of a surface to add our hot glue. I add some hot glue on the bottom of that piece and then also on the front tire and I glue it down inside the globe. And then of course I add one more tree. Now our second layer to the snowman is done and we can move on to his head. For the head, again, we're using that build your own snow globe. And this piece in here can kind of be a little bit of a pain to come out. It's because it's supposed to be watertight so that you can build your snow globe. And I just removed that and then I'm going to pour a decent amount of that faux snow from Dollar Tree down inside the snowman's head. Unlike the other two layers to our snowman, I'm just taking the fairy lights and I just tangle them up and put them down inside and you again want to have that battery pack hanging out and you still can add your airtight piece, your bottom piece on even with that hanging out because it is so thin and you have this really neat snowman head that glows and has gorgeous snow down inside. I absolutely could not wait for this part and that is building up our snowman. I take the Gorilla Glue hot glue and I just place it around the bottom layer to our snowman, place the second layer on top, wipe off any excess hot glue and as you can see I am making sure that the cords to our fairy lights are all facing the same direction and going down the back of our snowman. 
Then you are just going to hot glue your build your own snow globe snowman's head right on top. Here is a little sneak peek and oh my goodness, how stinking cute. I love this DIY so much. I kind of wanted to go along with our mini little snowman. So just like with him, I made a scarf out of that fabric that I used to make the trees, the fabric from Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to loosely wrap it around his neck. Not super loose, but loose enough to where once you are done, you can slide your battery pack pieces up behind the scarf and then you will not see them. So once I had his scarf wrapped around, I just hot glued it down in place where I would like it. Then for the snowman's face, I just again used that black chalk paint and my little tiny paintbrush and I painted his face, his nose, and his buttons on as well. Now for this snowman, I was able to find a hat and they do also have perfect size snowman hats at Dollar Tree as well. However, this one was only 98 cents from Walmart. So I definitely grabbed it up because it is cheaper and it was a pick. So I just pulled it off the pick and I kind of dent it a little bit so that it looks a little bit more correct once I glue it on. And then I just add a little bit of hot glue and place it right on top of our snowman's head and this DIY is done. For this DIY, I got this house shaped beach decor item from Big Lots. It was 90% off. The original price was $14 and with the 90% off, it was only $1.40. So I absolutely had to grab it and take it home. I mainly do Dollar Tree items, but I would love to branch out and do, and do other items from other stores. Let me know what you guys think of that down below. I always want to put your guys' opinion first. So let me know what you guys think of that down below. So for this house piece, I removed the hanger, added some Dollar Tree spackling to fill in the holes from the hanger, and then I just used my thumbs to push on the corners of the house to have that backing pop out. So I wanted to get rid of this lettering here. So I just take my zip sander and I start sanding a lot of that lettering off. And as I was sanding, I realized that I could just sand a lot of the paint off in general because it was coming off actually very easy. So I just tried sanding as much as I possibly could off. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to get as much of that wood grain popping out as much as I possibly could so that I could use the faux stain technique, which is just paint and water, which I made the apple barrel burnt umber paint and a little bit of black chalk paint and just mix a little bit of water with it and you just paint it on and wipe it right off. You could also paint it on and leave it if you would like it to be darker. I'm a little impatient, so I went ahead and also dried it with my heat gun, and I will have that also linked down below. You could also use a hair blow dryer as well. Now using my white chalk paint, I wanted a nice shiplap wood look, so I just start taking it and dipping my chippy brush right into that white chalk paint, and I do a streaking motion, and I start like kind of making larger streaks, and then I turn the brush, and I start blending it. And I have the brush sideways, dipping it into the paint again, and just making marks going down that board. And then I turn the brush how it's supposed to be normally, and then I start blending it. And I just keep doing that until I have it the look that I would like. Once the paint was completely dry, I designed this Christmas bucket list design in Cricut Design Space. I will have the link down below for you guys to use it as well if you would like. And I just placed it right onto 
the front of that wood house and I do wish I would have put it up a little bit further so just keep that in mind don't put it as low as I did I do wish I had put it up again a little bit more closer to the top than I had did here so I place that on and then I flip it over to start working on the other side and I did not use the faux stain here because it was already a darker color and I also liked the fact that it was a little bit lighter than the other side since this side is going to be the fall side. So I did the same paint technique and then I use this design from Cricut Design Space I did not design this one, but you can find this in Cricut Design Space as well. So I just place this one down on the other side of that house shape. And I love how these two sides go together, but they also look so different. For the frame of the house, I want the front side, which is the Christmas side, to be really simple and modern I guess you could say so I use my black chalk paint and I paint the entire frame except for the back of the frame so basically the front the sides and the inside of the frame I go ahead and paint with that black chalk paint the reason why I'm not painting the back of the house is because I want that to be our fall side and I wanted it to have this really pretty fall color but I did not want it to be a bright fall color and I found this Dixie Belle terracotta color so gorgeous. I just had to get it and it definitely does not disappoint. Now, as you could see at first, I thought I was going to be able to freehand that and not get any on the sides where it is black, but I was not that confident in myself. So I just took some painter's tape and placed it right over the black spots so that I did not get any of that terracotta color on the black paint and I just went around the entire house shape on the back with that terracotta color. Once I removed the tape, I absolutely loved the look of this. However, when I was painting, I did notice that there are those little nail pieces where the backing of the house was on this house piece. So I did go ahead and remove those because I knew I was going to be gluing the backing back on. So I was not worried about making sure that those lined up with the holes and all of that. So I just went ahead and took them right out. Once I had those little nails out, I did place the house on my Cricut mat just because it was black and it wanted to pick up a lot of the sanding dust and all of that. For some reason, black chalk paint picks up any little fingerprint, but in order to add the little backing of the house, and I keep saying little, but this thing is actually humongous. In order to add the back of the house, I just used that super glue wood glue, placed it in that spot where the house goes, and then I just placed that backing right back down, making sure that the Christmas side was on the Christmas side and the fall side was on the fall side. Like I said previously, I want the Christmas side to be very simple, very modern. So for the fall side, I want to add a little bit more details. So I use this black cotton twine from Dollar Tree and I finally got me a little small detail hot glue gun and that I actually got at Home Depot. So it was actually very inexpensive too. And I really, really like, like the fact that it does not put out a crap ton of hot glue like my other hot glue done gun does. So I was able to go really, really close to that crack where the house shape is. And I just added some hot glue going all the way around and added that black cotton twine going all the way around that house. And I just love how the finished look of that turns out because it really brings out the black lettering so much more. Once I had the border done, I used these beads that I found at Dollar Tree. They are white, black, and like a light purple color, and they are multi-size as well. So I just grab a few of the black ones, only two of the black ones, and then I grab four of the white ones. And I paint the four white ones with that really pretty terracotta colored paint from Dixie Belle. 
And once those were dry, I start taking one of the terracotta colored beads and I place it onto a piece of jute string. Then I add a black bead. And just a little tip, if you rub your glue gun, the tip of your glue gun on the end of your jute twine, wait for it to cool down just a second and then grab it and pinch and pull up at the same time. It will make it really easy for you to string on your beads. And then I just kind of alternated the colors on the beads and pulled them down to where I could fold the jute twine over and have them hanging at different lengths. And because of timing of this video, the length of this video is very long even though we're not doing a lot of DIYs. So I had to not put the tut tutorial for the bow in there, but it is just a finger bow. And I did use some Dollar Tree ribbon to make the finger bow. So I take the jute twine and I cut off the excess and I'm just going to fold the ribbon or the jute twine in half to make the beads hang how I would like them and then I glue them to the back of the bow and I glued the bow kind of off to the side on the house and this DIY is done. I think this DIY turned out so beautiful and I am obsessed with the size of this for only a dollar and 40 cents for that house shape. I mean, this thing is absolutely humongous. Okay friends, I have got to know, which side do you like better, the fall side or the Christmas side with the Christmas bucket list? Let me know down in the comments. For this DIY, I'm using two of the Buffalo Check fabrics from Dollar Tree, the red and black and the white and black. And I start off with the red and black trees first. So I laid the fabric out and I noticed that it had a lot of folds in it and you want this to be nice and flat. So I did go ahead and fold it in half once and then iron it. Once I had the fabric all nice and flat and straight, I went ahead and used my ugly old yardstick and I started tracing out the size of the triangle that I would like my tree to be. You can make your trees wider, skinnier, shorter, or taller if you would like. It all just depends on your style and also how you fold your fabric. And if you don't like the triangle trees, you could also do this exact same technique that I'm showing you here for these styles of trees as well. And you can also get templates for the tree shape online very easily. Once I had the triangle traced out, I used my scissors just to cut out that fabric and it was still connected up here at the top, which usually doesn't happen, but apparently I didn't get my tip close as I should have to the edge, but that is okay. You just want to start hot gluing your fabric face to face and when you add your hot glue, you want to add it as close as you can to the edge of your fabric as you possibly can get. And you only want to add the hot glue just to the sides going down the tree. You want to leave the bottom completely open. I didn't show it because it's just repetitive, but I did do two of these trees, so I repeated these same steps one more time. I do recommend making sure that you let your glue completely harden and set before you start turning the fabric right side up. So I just set it to the side and started working on my next tree, which is the white and black really large tree. And I love this tree. The size of it just gets me every time I look over at the set. I they are just adorable. And to make this tree larger, all I did was turn the fabric a different way, making sure that it is still folded at least once so that when we cut our triangle out, we are getting the two triangles and you just trace a larger tree or a smaller tree, whatever you would like. Then just hot glue the fabric face to face like you did the previous tree. And once your hot glue is completely set, you can start turning your trees where the fabric is facing the right direction. You can use your scissors or the end of your paintbrush to kind of push that tip all the way up so you have your nice pointy top to your tree. By all means, if you are a sewer, you definitely can sew these trees, but the seams on these trees are pretty good for just some hot glue. When it's time to start stuffing your trees, you can use so many different things. For instance, I'm using some fake spider web that I had left over after decorating our house for Halloween, and I just start taking the fake spider web and stuffing it up inside the tree. 
You could, of course, use polyfill or whatever you would like to stuff your trees, but this is what I had on hand and it worked absolutely perfect. Once you have your trees to the fullness that you would like, all you're going to do is fold the fabric down here at the bottom, overlapping each other, and add some hot glue just on the corners. You want to leave the center still open so that you can add your tree trunk and you will close that later on. But again, you just want to add some hot glue on the sides, leaving about an inch hole down at the bottom. I repeated the same steps and stuffed the other two trees and I am already so excited for how this DIY is turning out. For the trunks to the trees, I'm using these really long skewer sticks that I found at Dollar Tree. You can use dowel rods or whatever you would like, but I found these and I thought that they would be a great option because you can make your trunks really long if you would like to. I wanted to have mine in three different lengths, but only one of these skewer sticks would be kind of weird looking as a trunk because it is so skinny and these trees are so large. Well, I cut them in three different sizes and cut three of each size so that I can kind of glue them in clusters. And then I use my antiquing wax to just stain them so that they look a little bit more like a tree trunk color. Now, because my trees are so large, I also need a support system going up inside the tree, so I left one of the skewer sticks nice and long so that I can cut it down when I need to, and I also stained that as well. Okay, now here's where I do the tree trunks. I know it was probably kind of confusing when I explained it earlier, but I'm going to take two of the same size. Again, I cut three different sizes and three of each size. And then I'm just going to glue those three together, just like I did here, where I take two of the bamboo, no, skewer sticks. Yeah, they are bamboo skewer sticks. I take two of the bamboo skewer sticks and I glue them together, adding some hot glue down the center. And then I take that third one and add it on there as well. So now they are all three glued together and we have a thicker tree trunk. To make the support system that goes up inside your tree to make sure the tree stands nice and straight, I'm taking that long bamboo skewer stick that I also stained and I'm going to cut it so that it is quite a bit longer than the actual tree trunk. I want to make sure that it goes at least halfway up inside the tree. And then once you have that piece cut, you can glue it to the tree trunk just like you did the rest of them. And this will also make the tree trunk a little bit thicker as well. For the other two tree trunks, I did the exact same steps, cutting that bamboo piece so that it is longer than the actual trunk and will go at least halfway up in the tree and then glue it to the tree trunk. Once you have all three of the tree trunks made, you can start placing them inside your trees and all I do is just start putting them in the hole that we left open and did not hot glue closed. And you might have to kind of wiggle your polyfill or your spider web, whatever you have down inside until you kind of get the tree trunk where you would like it to be. And then you're just going to take your hot glue gun. I do add a little bit of hot glue down in the center on this one for whatever reason. I don't do it to the other ones, I think, because I found it kind of unnecessary. But... I do also take it and add it to the seam where the hole is just to kind of close that up and your tree trunk is nice and secure. I repeated the same steps with the other trees and you can also shove your tree trunk up inside your tree more if you would like it to be shorter and you can also pull it out a little bit more if you would like it to be longer. And just hot glue your holes shut and you have these adorable trees. So at Dollar Tree the other day, I found these amazing wood slices. They come in a two pack. They have two different sizes in the pack and they are perfect little stands for our trees. To attach the trees to the wood slices, I used some of the Dollar Tree Super Glue Wood Glue, again, amazing product, and some hot glue. And the hot glue that I use is the Gorilla Glue Hot Glue. I always use that brand and I always have it linked down in the description box. I put the glue on the bottom of the tree trunk, added it to the wood slice, and then I take some more hot glue and I start going around the tree trunk just slightly down at the bottom. I want it to have a little bit of kind of like a curve down. I don't know how to explain it. You see how it looks here. I wanted to have 
a slope to it, I guess you could say, and it to kind of look like an actual tree trunk. And you know how the tree trunk bottoms, they have, they, they go wider down at the bottom. That's kind of the look that I was going for. You do not have to do that. You could just directly glue them on and you don't have to have all of that excess glue if you do not want this look but this is the look that i was going for so again i just started gluing the tree trunks to the wood slices and then taking some hot glue and building it up down at the bottom around the bottom of the tree trunk once the hot glue has completely set i use some mod podge and i just start taking it and placing it onto where the hot glue is and then going up the tree trunk just ever so slightly and also down a little bit on that wood slice as well. I want you to still be able to see the wood slice, so I did not completely cover it. I added some of the Dollar Tree faux snow onto the Mod Podge, repeated the same steps on the other trees, and this DIY is done. Okay friends, this DIY really is super simple and I did make something similar around springtime and it was a huge hit. So when I had seen this recent item at Dollar Tree, I knew I had to do one for Christmas. I start off with a foam wreath form from Dollar Tree. It definitely has had better days. I've had it for quite some time and I'm going to use some red chalk paint and a little bit of black chalk paint. It does not have to be this exact color. You just want to take the wreath form and give it a nice coat of a red paint. Once your wreath is dry, you will need a bag of potpourri from Dollar Tree, and I had found this red potpourri. They also have green now. I don't know if these colors are seasonal. I usually don't see these two colors, but since I did and it was around Christmas time, I knew I had to grab them because, again, this is just a great wreath, and it does really turn out so neat. So what I do is I take the bag of potpourri and I just start grabbing all of the bigger pieces out first and then I start hot gluing them again using the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks all over the wreath form, some facing up, some facing down. You just want to place them anywhere that you can. Then once you have those larger pieces on, it is just literally as simple as taking the rest of the pieces and gluing them all over the wreath stacking them on top of each other going largest to smallest and you want to keep the smaller pieces for last so that you can use them to fill in any gaps and once you are done you have this amazing nature looking wreath i love the nature look of it and the smell is so amazing so again all you're doing is gluing these pieces down covering the wreath form and this diy is done For this DIY, I started out with the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, also known as Jenga blocks, but all I did was take the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree, which I've said it in previous videos, and I will say it again, that super glue wood glue is amazing. So I just add a little bit of the super glue wood glue and a little bit of hot glue onto the Jenga block pieces, and then I start just gluing them together until I have seven Jenga blocks glued together. Right now I'm making the side panels to the lanterns so you could make these longer or shorter depending on how big you would like your lantern to be. But once you have seven of those glued together, you want to make four of those total. So therefore you will have four rows of seven Jenga blocks. The seven Jenga blocks glued together is for the larger lantern. For the smaller lantern, I glued five Jenga blocks together instead of seven. And again, I used the super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue to glue those together and you will do four rows of those as well.
Once all the Jenga block pieces are glued together, you could leave them like this, but I personally like to use the Dollar Tree spackling to go over the Jenga block pieces just to make it all nice and smooth so that it doesn't look like it is a bunch of game pieces glued together and it really looks like a nice long side panel. Again, this is just personal preference. You could leave them exactly how they are and start painting them, but I personally like to take this extra little step just to give them that really clean finished look. Once the spackling was dry, I do take my zip sander and just sand it down just a little bit more to make sure that it is all completely smooth. Now that I have all of them sanded, I just take my white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white and I paint all eight of those side pieces. So Dollar Tree has many, many, many different options on what you could use for the tops and bottoms of your lanterns. I've made so many different lanterns and I believe they were all literally everything it was from Dollar Tree. So trust me, there is so many different things. For these lanterns, I'm using these wood boxes from Dollar Tree. They do come in three different sizes and they have these cute little like metal label holders on them and I just remove them with a little screwdriver and I'm going to do that to two of the larger boxes and two of the medium sized boxes. I do not need any of the smaller boxes at all. So again, you just need two larger and two medium boxes. Then I take the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white yet again and I paint all of those boxes as well. To start assembling the lantern, I'm using the longer pieces first to build the larger lantern and I add some of that super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue again and I just glue that longer piece to the inside corner of one of the larger boxes. I repeated the same steps with the other three longer Jenga block pieces, adding the super glue wood glue as well as the hot glue and gluing it to the inside corner of the larger box. I do want to point out you want to make sure that your label holder piece that you're going to be screwing back on is facing the way that you want it to be, which is hopefully facing forward. Add some glue to the top of the top of the Jenga blocks and then you can place that second box right on top and you have this already nice lantern shape. And then I do the same exact steps yet again for the smaller lantern, which is taking now the five piece Jenga block pieces and gluing those to the inside corner and then making sure I place that smaller box right on top and gluing those pieces to those corners as well. I want to add kind of like a second layer to these lanterns. So I'm just going to use one of these square. They're really nice and chunky. It is just a decor piece from Dollar Tree. It has a beautiful saying on it, but I do have several of them. So I was okay with taking this one apart, but it does have a little bit of a stubborn burlap on it. If I would have maybe got it wet or even used my heat gun, it probably would have came off so much easier, but it still wasn't too much trouble. But then I did find out that there was these little tiny nail pieces that held that saying on there. So all I did was just pull those out. Now, because that burlap was on there, it did leave these little hairy pieces glued down on here. So I did just use my zip sander to sand any of that off. And once I had that nice and smooth, I painted it the same color as all of the rest of the lantern, which is the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color linen white. And you guys, I'm just going to say it now, that is the white paint that I used the entire video. So I'm just going to say white chalk paint from here on out. That larger piece is for the second layer of the larger lantern. This little small Halloween decor piece is the second layer for the smaller lantern. And it was only a dollar at Walmart, but it was marked down to 50 cents. So I did get that for 50 cents. But again, Dollar Tree has many options that you can choose from. I did not have to paint the entire piece with the white chalk paint, but I did just go in at the sides and on top so that you could not see any type of color and it all looked completely white. Now for the tippy tops of our lantern, I got the Christmas lantern around Christmas time last year, but the black lantern that is for Halloween, I did just get within the last few weeks around Halloween this year. So all I did was pop these really nice curved tops off and this part is kind of funny. I just had to leave it in there. Okay, so 
I got out my hot knife because they do have these little tabs to hold them onto the second larger part of the lantern. And I thought for some reason they were going to be kind of hard to come off. So I was just like, well, we'll bust out the hot knife and it'll be super easy. And then I was like, wait a minute, this is even taking longer than probably just cutting them off with my scissors. So let's see if that'll work. And yeah, it worked so easy. So just cut off the little tabs with your scissors and do not worry about the hot knife. Once those tabs are cut off, you have the perfect tops to your lantern, and I did try and take them outside to spray paint them because they are plastic, and I just hate trying to actually hand paint plastic, but it did not work out because the paint I was using was more of a satin, like, not matte finish at all, so I just came inside and painted them with the white chalk paint. Then I use my favorite bamboo sticks. You guys see me use them all of the time. I literally ran out in this video and I was so sad, but I'm definitely going to be getting more very soon. I have to. They are just a staple in my craft room. I painted several of those white as well, and then I'm using that little tiny square piece that is the Halloween decor piece, and I glue one of the tops to our lanterns right on there, and look at that. I mean, that is a perfect fit. You cannot get any more perfect than that. Now the second lantern, which is the larger lantern, I wanted it to have a little bit of a different look. So I chose something a little bit more big and bulky for the second layer. And then I glued that top piece from the other lantern right on top of that nice bulky piece that we painted white. And I just love the look of these and they just are perfect tops to lanterns. And if you want the ring to stand straight up, you could just add a tiny bit of hot glue to the side and it will stand straight up. Then I take some of that Dollar Tree spackling again and I just go over any of the parts where you can see any creases. And again, you guys, this is just personal preference. Again, it is such a clean finished look. I always try and do this with my pieces because I really enjoy the finished piece. Look at how perfect that comes out. You cannot even tell that that was two different pieces. To create the X's on the sides of the lanterns, I take those bamboo sticks that I painted with a white chalk paint and I just cut them down to size, hold them up to the inside of the lantern where I would like them to be, and then I just glue them into place. You could also use dowel rods to create these X's. You do not have to have these bamboo sticks. I just personally like them because they are kind of flat instead of round. So they, they're they just not as bulky and they just come in handy so very much. So whatever I did to the larger lantern, I also did to the smaller lantern. I wanted these to be a pair, but just look slightly, ever so slightly different. So again, I just cut those bamboo sticks down to size, and then glued them inside the lantern, creating the X's on both sides. Now here's why earlier I had said to make sure the holes for the label holder is faint facing the front of your lantern, because I do go ahead and add these label holders back onto the lanterns, and I just place them right where they were previously, and just screw them right back on. You can hot glue them on if you would like, but I do think adding the screws just gives it a more finished look. I also screwed the metal label holders onto the larger lantern as well. Now to put the tops on the lantern, and I did forget to mention earlier that those plastic lanterns that I took apart for the tops are from Dollar Tree as well. I started with a larger lantern first and I added some hot glue onto the bottom of our bulky piece and then placed it right center at the top of our larger lantern. And once I had that one on, I did the same exact steps to the smaller lantern, placing hot glue on the bottom of that little Halloween piece that has our lantern top on it and placing it center on the smaller lantern. Again, because I like that nice, clean, finished look, I did add some of that Dollar Tree spackling in those cracks as well to give it a smooth finish. 
So while I was at Dollar Tree the other day in the Christmas section, I found these cute little wood shape angels and my first thought was they were adorable and my second thought was those would make perfect little feet or legs to home decor or whatever you would like to put on them. So I decided to pull off those little paper wings. They came off super, super easy. And then I used that again, white Rust-Oleum chalk paint and I painted all of those little angels, which were now our little feet to our lanterns. And I did end up painting eight of those so that I could have four on each one of the lanterns. So I do add some hot glue onto the bottom and I always use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They are absolutely phenomenal. I always have them and my hot glue gun and most of the items that I use down in the description box if you guys would ever like to check them out. So once again, I just glue one of those onto each one of the corners of the bottom box and I am so in love with how these turned out. And here's the thing, I know this is mainly a fall and Christmas video, but I wanted to make these so like simple looking that they could be for any holiday or any season. You could use these all year round if you would like. I seriously think those little wood angels are absolutely perfect legs for these lanterns and they could be used in so many different ways. You could really dress these up or just add some LED candles. Do not add real candles. And let me just show you guys these Christmas ones. I love them for Christmas. And again, you could put so many different items inside of these and decorate them for every season. For this DIY, I found this wood piece in the trash. Yes, you guys, I know it was sitting on the side of the road. And listen, after seeing some of the beautiful things that Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs has done with things that she's grabbed out of the trash or off the side of the road, I had to grab it because once I seen it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. One, the pieces were already starting to fall apart, so I didn't have to feel bad about ripping that gorgeous piece apart. But they also have the peaks, which are perfect for the project because you will need those peaks. So if you have any extra picket fence pieces, or you could also look on Facebook Marketplace, they have tons of free wood just like this, and you can do it this exact same project. I used my zip sander to sand all three of these pieces down so that you would not get any splinters. And you do want to have the rough, you know, rustic, natural look to them, but you don't want to obviously get hurt. So I just sanded them down and then you're going to take two of those picket fence pieces, place them together, and then you're going to take your third one and place it on top. Then move it up a few inches you can make it taller or shorter if you would like. Then I just use my yardstick and trace down where I would like to cut down those two pieces that are on the bottom to get our church shape. To cut these wood pieces down, I'm going to bring out Susie the table saw and this little thing is just so cute and it really is pretty dang powerful and I love how quick and easy it is to work with and again, hello, it is just so tiny and cute. I got it off of Amazon and I will definitely have the link down in the description box if you guys would like to check it out. Once I had those pieces cut down, I was going to leave this red piece here, this color, because it's kind of Christmassy already, but I did have a vision in mind, so I had to get there, and I used the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint, and I just did a heavy dry brushing on all three of these wood pieces so that they all looked the same. To start assembling the church, I flip the smaller pieces over to the back. Then I'm going to take a piece of wood from Dollar Tree and I just marked it where I wanted to cut it and it was pretty much just in half. Then I use a lot of super glue wood glue, which I did not mean to use that much. And I'm going to glue those two pieces, one at the bottom and then one closer to the top, just to keep those two church pieces nice and secure. 
Then I take the longer piece and I add some more super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue and you're going to glue that right in the center in between those two first wood pieces creating the church. On the peaks of my church, I want to create a roof, so I'm using these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. You can also use the Dollar Tree ones as well, and I'm going to do a faux stain, which is just water and paint, and I mix those up until I like the color, and then I just start painting it on just like you would any other stain. And I do do the front and back of these two craft sticks. Once the craft sticks were dry, I used my scissors just to cut off the rounded edge. You can keep that rounded edge if you would like. I wanted a straight edge, and then I just hold it up here at the peak so that I can kind of see how much I wanted it to hang off on the side of the roof. And then all I do is cut down four of those pieces so that they will fit on all four of the peaks, these two up here, as well as the two down on the bottom part of the church. Then all I do is use my hot glue gun and I just hot glue all of those roof pieces onto the peaks of our church. Once the roof of your church is on, it will look like this. And next I'm going to be using this amazing wood rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree, this gorgeous brown wood. It looks so real. They also have like a white shiplap look as well and also a darker, almost like a black wood. And I've used these rub-on transfers in this fall project here. And these wood, wood rub-on transfers are amazing. As you can see, I left the backing on the transfer. Then I'm going to place it facing down on my church. And I use my yardstick and pen to draw and trace out a really tall, pretty grand door. I wanted it to have a curved top, so I used my paint to kind of give it a curved top to it. I did go in and curve it just a little bit more, and I also did make it a little bit more narrow and not so wide as you can see here in just a moment. But once I have the door traced out, I do go ahead and cut it out with my scissors. Again, still having that wood track wood rub on transfer still on its backing then once you have your door completely cut out you can take it and make sure that that is the length and size you would like your door to be now this wood does have a lot of nicks and dings and things like that because it is just nice and weathered so i take some mod podge and i place it right where the door is going to be then once it is completely dry Again, let the Mod Podge completely dry. You're not gluing the transfer on to your church. You're going to let the Mod Podge dry so that the surface is nice and smooth. And then you are going to place down your rub on transfer and you can use a squeegee or credit card, whatever you have on hand to just start rubbing that transfer down. And when you're rubbing these transfers down, that makes it transfer onto your project. And I like to rub it down really nice, making sure that I get it all on there. And then as I'm peeling it off, I peel the backing off and I still kind of continue to rub the transfer on so that I don't accidentally pull anything up. But really, these transfers work so great. And you guys, oh my goodness, look at that. For the wreath on the top of the church, I'm using these greenery ties from Dollar Tree. I did have one from last year that I had already sprayed the faux snow that Dollar Tree carries on it, and I really liked that look. However, it is too bushy, so I'm going to take my scissors and just cut down those bristles so that it is a little bit thinner and not so crazy. We want it to look as realistic as we can make it. Now I just take it and form a circle with that greenery piece and I just twisted the ends together. You can hot glue it if you would like, but this creates the perfect little wreath form. 
I want to add some little red berries to this wreath and Dollar Tree carries these pit berry garlands and you can pull the berries right off. They are usually on a string to attached to one another and all I did was pull a few of them off and then I'm just going to cut off the string that is holding two of them together, add some hot glue onto the wreath and then I glue those little berries on to our little wreath and I place them in like little clusters or pairs I guess you could say and I do a few pairs going around the wreath form. Once I had my berries glued on I pulled this bow off of another Dollar Tree ornament and I did cut down the tails to the bow to make it a little bit shorter and I glued it right onto our wreath. Adding the wreath onto the church is super simple. Find out where you would like to place it, add some hot glue onto the back of the wreath, and glue it right down in place. Oh my goodness, how adorable is that? You can definitely leave it just the wreath, but I also pulled a, another greenery piece with a pine cone and some berries off of another Dollar Tree ornament, and I glued it up at the top of the door, kind of like an over-the-door swag. Once I had all the greenery in place, I wanted to create a cross at the top and I ran out of these bamboo sticks a couple days ago, but I found a spare one that I had spilled coffee on and I knew I'd be able to use it eventually and it definitely came in handy today. You could also use a craft stick or even a popsicle stick to create the cross as well. So all I did was cut that bamboo stick down into two pieces and I glued the two pieces together creating that cross shape. And then I use the same faux stain that we used on the roof, which again is just the paint and water mixture. And I stain the cross the same wood color. Now all you have to do is glue the cross up here at the top of your church. Okay, so last minute I decided I wanted to add a drape more, I guess, for looks than anything, but it also it does have meaning to it. So I'm going to take some Dollar Tree white fabric. This is a Crafter Square product, and I just cut a piece. It's probably about a quarter of an inch wide, and I would say maybe three or four inches long. And for the drape, I wanted to have these dovetailed ends on either end, so I just fold the fabric in half and then I cut at an inward diagonal angle and it will give you these really nice dovetailed ends. Then you are going to take your drape and you are going to add it to the cross, placing either end of the fabric back behind the cross, hot gluing it down, making sure that the loop is in front of the cross so that when you fold it over, it will look correct. Then add some hot glue and fold your drape down and look how amazing that turned out. Okay, how absolutely gorgeous is this Christmas decor piece off of Etsy? I had to recreate it and I knew exactly how. So I'm going to start with some Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and I use the super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue. And I glue two of those tower blocks together end to end. And I do that one more time with two more pieces. Then you're going to take the two sets of tumbling tower blocks and you're going to glue them in a T shape. Now to make it from a T into a cross, you're going to take one more tumbling tower block and place it in the center up top of the T. Now I want my cross to be thicker, so in order to do that, I take some more tumbling tower blocks and I just start gluing them over top of the original cross, basically making two crosses and gluing them together and that makes it as thick as we will need it. 
Now I have a nice thick wood cross that is also going to be the T in my word Christmas. For the other letter blocks, Dollar Tree carries these thicker pieces of wood and I place it right underneath where the T is and I mark it so that I can cut two of those because those are the S and the M in our word Christmas and you need those to be the biggest. And to make those cuts, I use my little mini table saw. Again, it will always be linked down below whenever I use it in a video. I make the S and the M cut and then I take a few more pieces of those wood pieces from Dollar Tree and I make the other letters just by making them in different size variations smaller than the first two, which are the S and the M. Okay, that sounded a little bit confusing. Basically, you're making the S and the M cut, which are the biggest letter blocks, and then all of the other letter blocks you can make smaller than that and in different sizes. You can see down at the bottom of the screen what I mean. I just have a bunch of different size blocks and the S and the M are the biggest. So now I'm taking my faux stain that I like to use, which is the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber with a little bit of black chalk paint mixed in with some water just to make the stain a little bit darker. And I go ahead and I start staining all of those wood pieces as well as the cross. Once everything was stained and the stain was dry, I used my Cricut machine to cut out the word Christmas except for the T and I start placing each one of the, le of the letters in the center of each one of the blocks. And as you can see, while I was in Cricut Design Space, I did kind of make each one of the letters shorter or taller depending on how big their block was. So basically, depending on how big the wood piece was, that was how big I made the letters. And since they are all different sizes, I also made the letters different sizes as well because that's exactly how it was in the picture. Once I had all the letters stuck onto the pieces of wood, I take my white chalk paint and I do just kind of do a heavy dry brushing across the entire wood piece. I left the top blank because once you remove the sticker letters or the vinyl letters, you can see that really pretty wood color showing through and the top makes that pop, I think, a little bit more. But unfortunately, I do kind of mess up and get some on the top of one. So I just kind of figured I would go ahead and start painting the tops and have it all that white distressed look. But what I do is I paint over the sticker letters and again, that will make it so that once you reveal the sticker letter and pull it off, that wood will show through. I like to take my Cricut tool or even a pair of tweezers and grab the sticker letter or vinyl letter and peel it off before the paint dries. Now, because I use that bare chalk paint and it's really not the best, at least in my opinion, I do go over it really quickly each block before I peel the letter off with one quick coat of that white chalk paint, just so that it is a little bit, I guess, more covered than it originally was. And seriously, look how gorgeous that looks with that wood color peeking through the letter. Repeat those steps with the rest of the letter blocks, then you're going to spell out the word Christmas, putting the letters in the position that they go, and this DIY is done. I think this DIY is beautiful and so meaningful as well, and it also looks amazing next to our larger church that we did in the previous video. Etsy website I found these gorgeous stick trees with this gold glitter on them and I knew I had to make some so I grabbed some Dollar Tree poster board it does not matter what color you are using you can use any color I folded mine in half and then I'm going to start cutting it down that center because I do want to make two different size trees and I'm going to start placing this poster board into a cone and I just start wrapping it up at one corner and forming that cone shape. If you have not made the cones before, they are fairly easy and if you do not get it the first time, just unravel the poster board and try again. Once you have the cone shape that you like, just hot glue it into place and cut off the excess. 
Now these cones are gonna stand up super funky and to fix that problem, you want to smush it down, flatten it completely flat and cut straight across. And then you want to turn it 180 degrees and cut again straight across after you flatten it out. And to get it back into that circle shape, I just start folding it and making a crease between each one of those creases that I made from flattening it down. You can also just keep cutting it until you have the cone completely straight at the bottom and will stand up. I made two of those cones as you could see and then I just went out to my yard and grabbed a whole bunch of sticks. Then using my miter shears I start cutting a bunch of the sticks down into little size pieces around an inch to two inches some even a half inch you will need to cut quite a few pieces of those sticks but once you have a bunch cut down you want to start taking them and hot gluing them together going around the cone you are not gluing the sticks to the cone itself you are just gluing the sticks to one another going around the cone shape I start with forming a circle down at the bottom of the cone, then I need to start working my way up, so I need to start getting some height. So I just take two pieces of stick and try and kind of form a triangle with it, but without a bottom, and I glue it to that circle on the sticks that is on the bottom of the cone. And I do a few of those going around, and you can kind of work with adding sticks leaning up against those and then you know taking a stick and placing it to where it connects one side one stick to another you're just going to keep placing them going around kind of filling in gaps and connecting all the sticks together as much as you can honestly it's probably easier to just watch than actually have someone explain because it really is just super easy all you're doing is covering the cone with sticks but not gluing the sticks to the cone you're gluing the sticks to each other and working your way up as you go Now the original trees on Etsy did have this gold glitter on them and as I was making these trees I really fell in love with the natural rustic look of these trees and just the natural wood. So I kept going until I reached the top and then once you have all of your sticks placed on you can just reach up underneath the bottom and kind of pull your cone right out. Here's a quick little tip. A DIY like this will probably have a lot of hot glue strands. If you take a heat gun or even a hair blow dryer, it will make those glue strands disappear right before your eyes. I also made a larger one and put some fairy lights up inside of them and these turned out so gorgeous. are always a big hit during the Christmas season and I just adore these Christmas gnomes with the greenery so I wanted to try my hand at making my own. I love all the different styles Etsy has to choose from but Liz Moore from Liz Moore Decal and Decor here on YouTube also made some gnomes that I thought were really really adorable so I'm going to kind of incorporate a little bit of that style as well. Just like we did with our stick trees, you're going to take a Dollar Tree poster board and form it into a cone shape. And once you have the size cone that you would like, keep in mind that is how tall your gnome is going to be. And then you just glue it into place and cut off the excess. Now just flatten it just like we did previously. You want to completely squish your cone cut it down at the bottom going as straight as you can and then turn it to its side flatten it down again and cut off as straight as you can and that will definitely help keep your bottom round so that your cone stands straight up and again to get my cone back in that circle shape i do just crease in between each of the original creases from where we folded 
I repeated the same steps with another poster board from Dollar Tree, making it shorter and smaller this time. It really doesn't matter what color your poster board is because it will mostly be covered anyways. I'm going to start off with the larger gnome and I found these snow greeneries from Dollar Tree. There's two separate kinds and I love these. They are one of my favorite picks that I have found recently. And as you can see, they kind of are in groupings like a set here and a set here and there's like a space in the center. So what I did is I took two of them and I kind of overlapped them so that each space was covered. So again, just basically taking two pieces of the greenery and overlapping them so that the spaces are filled in by each one of the pieces of greenery. I repeated this step using two pieces of greenery each, making three bundles total. Now I take each bundle of the greenery and I start hot gluing it to our cone, except for I make sure the greenery just barely touches down at the bottom and kind of meets with the bottom of our cone. I just keep placing the greenery down where I would like it. Once I have it in place and it is low enough, I start hot gluing it in place and I do that with all three of the sets. Once I had all the greenery picks glued on, I used one more greenery pick in the same style and I just pulled the individual pieces off and I start hot gluing those down, making sure that I fill in any holes or any spots where you can see any of the poster board. And with all the greenery pieces glued on, you have this beautiful full greenery beard and this looks so high end to me. I really love how natural these look. For my gnome's hat, I'm using this Dollar Tree placemat. It is buffalo check on one side, and then it has a black fabric on the other. And you can kind of take the two pieces of fabric and start pulling them apart. So then you have more like a pillowcase. It is just two fabric pieces sewn together. And at one end, you're going to want to take a pair of scissors and just make a hole big enough to slide over the cone. Now that the hole is cut, I take the cone and I place it right inside the hole in the placemat and I pull the placemat down to where I would like my gnome's hat to start. Using my hot glue gun, I start adding some hot glue down on the bottom pieces of the corners of the fabric and I just start wrapping it around as far as I can around the cone and hot gluing it down wherever I'm able to add some hot glue so that we can keep that fabric in the cone shape. Then up at the top, I do make sure that the cone is touching the top of the placemat, like I push the placemat all the way down. And then I just start folding in the fabric, again, trying to keep that cone shape. And once I like how it is, I just go ahead and start hot gluing the fabric down. Next, I want to create a brim to my gnome's hat, and I just love burlap and buffalo check together, but the burlap ribbon that I have is a little bit too wide, so I just add some hot glue in the center, fold it over once to the center, add some more hot glue, and fold it over again on the other side, and you have a thinner, also not so see-through piece of burlap. I do want to mention that if you look here on the screen, Dollar Tree carries these rolls of burlap. This will work as well, but I just wanted to use the same burlap that I used on the other gnome, so that's why I used this burlap instead. I made sure that the piece of burlap was going to go all the way around the gnome, then I cut off the excess, wrap it around the gnome's hat right where it starts, and then I wrap it around to the back and hot glue it into place. At Dollar Tree, they carry this wired jute, and honestly, you could probably use regular jute string for this as well. I just personally like the wired because you can kind of make the loops loose. You'll see what I mean here in just a second. I glue it down onto the back of the gnome, and then I start, see how it kind of already has those circles from being spiraled? Well, I just start loosely wrapping those circles around my gnome's hat as I work my way up. I don't necessarily have the jute twine touching the gnome's hat, but it is wrapping around it, going up to the top, and getting, I guess, smaller as you go. I cut off the extra wired jute, and then I just hot glue it into place up here at the top of the hat. 
For my gnome snows, I'm using one of the medium size Christmas ornaments from Dollar Tree, except for I just take my white chalk paint and I give it two coats of this chalk paint, completely covering it, making sure that it is all white. Once the paint on the ornament is all dry, I add a decent amount of hot glue and then I just hot glue it right where I would like my gnome's nose to be and I also make sure it is slightly underneath the brim of the hat. I do take my glue gun and add a little bit of hot glue gluing the brim of the hat and the nose together. With the larger gnome done, I can now start on the smaller gnome and I'm using these fern picks from Dollar Tree. They are really frosted and they are really, really pretty. For this gnome, because these picks are so much fuller, I did only need four of them instead of six, but I did put them into groupings of two, just like I did with the first gnome. Now that I have my two greenery groups, I take one of them and I do this a little bit different than I did the first gnome. I glue one down, making sure that it is a little bit long, and you can make it go just slightly past the cone because these greenery pieces do kind of bend and are really light, so they don't have to, they'll kind of flow onto the floor, if you get what I'm saying. So instead of gluing the second piece beside the first one, like I did on the first gnome, I actually glued it right above it, kind of how we made our groupings of the greenery. For whatever reason, the stems on these picks were kind of poking out a lot and I needed them to be more flush with the cone. So I just add a little bit of hot glue where the stems need to go. And then I just add some jute twine securing it in place. And I do end up just leaving that on because we do cover it with this burlap that I, again, I will have linked down below in the description box for you guys to check out. Before I start wrapping the gnome's hat, I cut off a piece that I will need later for the brim. Now I'm going to take the burlap and I place my cone right on top, kind of putting it where I want the hat to start. And you want to make sure everything is out of the way and where you would like it to be. And I take the burlap and I start wrapping it around the front of the cone because I do want the seam to be in the back. And I keep trying to make sure that it, it stays in somewhat of that cone shape as you pull down. And then once you have it in the position that you would like, you can add a little bit of hot glue onto the burlap on the back and then hot glue your burlap down. And then I just cut off the excess so that I can kind of have a little bit more control on where I start placing the burlap next. And as you can see, I only glued the burlap to the burlap and I also made it quite loose so that I can make sure I pull the burlap down over the greenery where I want the hat to start. Then I just turn it around and hot glue it into place. I then take that roll of burlap and I start wrapping around the cone one more time. I do kind of double it up because you can pretty much see through burlap. So I want this to also have that saggy oversized look. I really loved that look when Liz did hers. So I'm going to just add a little bit of hot glue here and there on the cone and then glue the fabric to it after I bunch it like up and together here and there. I do this in a few different spots. I also will take the fabric and or the burlap and the hot glue it together and just kind of pinching it together here and there just to give it some wrinkles and some more texture. I simply keep doing these steps over and over until I wrap the entire cone, which does not take very long. You're just going to want to make sure that as you are wrapping, you are getting tighter and smaller as you go so that you still keep that cone shape. Once the gnome's hat was to the point that I like, I just took my hot glue gun, hot glued the burlap together, and then used my scissors to cut off the excess. Now I take the piece of burlap that I cut off earlier for the brim of the hat and I make a brim just like I did with the previous gnome. However, unlike the first gnome, I did not glue the brim of the hat on just yet before I did the gnome's nose. Dollar Tree does carry different sizes. If you would like to use a different size, they have smaller than these and larger. I did not paint this one. I left it that red color. And then once I left, 
Once I glued the gnome's nose where I would like it, I took the brim of the hat, placed it onto the cone where I would like the brim of the hat to be, making sure that it is overlapping the gnome's nose just a little bit. I turn it around to the back and hot glue it into place. I did forget to mention this when I showed the silicone spatulas earlier, but I will have these linked down below in the description box. These are amazing to use when you are working with burlap so you do not burn your fingers. And again, to make sure that the gnome's nose stays in place, I also secure it to the brim of the hat. Next, I use this red pitberry garland from Dollar Tree. They do have other colors that you can choose from. I just add some hot glue on the end of the garland, glue it to the bottom of my gnome's hat, and then I start wrapping it going up my gnome's hat. But as I wrap it, I do it, do it somewhat loose, just like I did with the wired jude. Once I have the Pitberry Garland how I would like it, I cut off the excess and add some hot glue up at the top and just glue it at the top behind the gnome's hat. You want to talk about something that you can put in your booth and sell. These are just so adorable. For this DIY, I will be creating the box shape with these wood pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of those as well as two of their palettes that they have. And I'm just going to place them just like this, but the wood pieces are a little bit longer than I need them to be. So I just use my cute little saw that I have shown you guys in previous videos. It is from Amazon and I will have the link down below in the description box. If you guys would like to check it out it is absolutely adorable and it really does work great so i just cut about a half inch off of those longer wood pieces and then they fit absolutely perfect so then i used the dollar tree super glue wood glue as well as some hot glue and i started placing those longer wood pieces right up against that inner wood piece on the inside of the palette then I did the same steps with the second wood piece on the other side of the palette. Then to add the second palette onto the other side, you just add the glue on the inner side of that wood piece and then slide it right on and you have this perfect like box shape. For the bottom, you could really use any Dollar Tree sign. Any MDF board sign will work and any foam board from Dollar Tree it will work. All I do is just take the wood piece, place it on top, and trace it out, and then you can just cut out the bottom with an X-Acto knife. This long board from Dollar Tree, it was a long Valentine's Day sign. It fit absolutely perfect. All I had to do was just cut off the one end. Once I have it cut off, I do go ahead and sand it down just to make sure that it is nice and smooth. Then I use that super glue wood glue again and some hot glue and I just place it onto the bottom of our wood piece, turn it around and then glue it right to that bottom board so that now we have a bottom to our wood piece. Now that we have the bottom on our wood piece, I'm going to be using my bamboo sticks once again, and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, and some hot glue onto the bottom of the bamboo stick, and then I place one on the back side on either corner of the wood piece. Next, I take another one of those bamboo sticks and I just hold it up to the top of those wood pieces, make sure that I have the size that I need, cut it off, and then I'm going to use some of that wood glue and a hot glue and glue it right to the top of those bamboo sticks. And once that bamboo stick is glued up here at the top, your piece should look like this. Now I would like the roof of my little market stand to have a slope to it so depending on how you would like your roof to be all I did to slope the roof was cut a little bit off of the bamboo stick and you could cut more or less depending on how sloped you would like yours to be and then once you cut them down to size add your glue and then glue them to the inside corners on the front of your little wood piece. 
And then here I go again saying little. This piece is not little as well. This is actually a very nice size decor piece. However, as I was doing this, I did notice that this back piece here was very wobbly, so I wanted to make it a little bit more sturdy, and to do that, all I did was take two more of these bamboo sticks, and I add some of that super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue, and I glue one to the back bamboo stick on both sides. So therefore, it is doubling up on that bamboo stick, and it is definitely making it a lot more sturdy. And once I was happy with that, I did go ahead and add one of the bamboo sticks to the top of those front bamboo sticks, just like we did the back ones, so that our roof has more to adhere onto. So just cut your bamboo stick or your dowel rod down to size and glue it to the top of the bamboo sticks, and now your piece should look like this. Every chance I get, I use the faux stain technique because it is just absolutely amazing and so easy to do. All you have to do is add a little bit of whatever color paint I'm using, the Apple Barrel Burnt Umber paint, and a little bit of water, mix that together, and then I thought this was just a little bit too light, so I added a little bit of black chalk paint to it, and when it comes to black, you only need a very, very tiny bit. You do not need much black at all for any darkening on any color. So I just mix those two paint colors with some water and you have this great faux stain. And then you can take a paintbrush and paint it on. You can wipe it off if you would like or you could let it dry so that it is a little bit darker. And you can control how light and how dark it is by the amount of water or the amount of paint that you use. I use this faux stain technique whenever I possibly can because it dries so fast. There is no icky smells, it's not sticky, and it is just super, super easy to make and work with. As you can see, the faux stain works just as well as normal stain. It really brings out that wood grain. I did the faux stain on the entire piece, then I used the white chalk paint and a chippy brush to do the same paint technique that I used on the house. So all I did was add the paint onto the brush and do a streak motion with my paintbrush turned to the side. Then I turn it to the normal way that you hold a paintbrush and just go back and forth blending that in. Then I turn it to the side again, add some paint, make some streaks, and I just keep blending and doing that streaking until I have the look that I like. And I just personally feel that this technique gives the best shiplap look and it just really gives this nice, beautiful style. And I use that white chalk paint and that paint technique to paint the entire market stand. Once the paint was all dry, I turn it over to the back just so I can add some of this chicken wire that I got off of Amazon. It was a big roll and I will have it linked down below in the description box. This was just a piece that I had left over and it fit across the back of this absolutely perfect. To attach the chicken wire, I did use my staple gun only down here at the bottom on this wood piece where the wood piece is nice and thick and up here at the top corners where the bamboo pieces are where we glued several of the bamboo pieces together so that the staple does not go through the side. So once again, I only use the staple gun up here at the top corners on the bamboo sticks because this is where it is nice and thick. I then just used an old pair of scissors to cut off the excess chicken wire, but I do want to make it a little bit more secure on here and attach that chicken wire just a little bit better. So I take some of these bamboo sticks that I had painted white and I just cut them down to size and I start gluing them along the back side of those bamboo sticks so that I'm smashing and sandwiching that chicken wire in between the bamboo sticks. Not only is this attaching the chicken wire to the stand a lot more, it is also going to make it look a lot more finished. After I attached those three bamboo sticks, I went ahead and started working on the roof, and for the roof, I'm using these galvanized metal plaques from Dollar Tree, and these worked out absolutely perfect, and I do wanna say that they also come in a black and a copper color. I wish I would have not used my black ones already, but I went ahead and used these beautiful galvanized metal looking ones, and all I did was count down three rows and then just bend it going straight back. And I did that to both of those metal plaques. 
Once you have both those bent back, you can go ahead and attach them by adding some hot glue or E6000 to one of the plaques and then placing one on top of the other, making sure that the grooves line up. Also, please be careful when using hot glue, the metal can get very hot. These metal plaques actually have four holes in them, but once you glue them together, these two holes will be remaining that is visible and they are absolutely perfect where they are at, so don't try to cover them up. You will need them later on. To attach the roof, I wanted to make sure to use some really strong glues, so I used E6000 on the higher back piece and the Gorilla Glue hot glue on the front piece. Now take the roof and slide the piece that you bent back up against the piece with the chicken wire and then attach the front to the front bamboo sticks and you have the roof to your market stand. And once I had it in position, I did add some of the hot glue on the back part as well where I added the E6000 just for some extra immediate hold. And here is how it should look once you have the roof on and it is absolutely adorable just like this. But if you would like to make the interchangeable signs, I'm just taking a piece of a wood plank from Dollar Tree and I mark it down to the size that I thought that I would like the sign to be. I do cut it down a little bit more a little bit later on once I realize I made it still a little bit too big. But all I did was use that wood piece, mark it down to size, and use my box knife or utility knife to cut those pieces off. And you just score it a few times and bend it back and forth and they will snap right off. And you do not have to have one of these wood boards from Dollar Tree. This is just a board that was hanging on a piece of jute string. They do have them in several different sizes, but you could also use a foam board, another Dollar Tree sign. They also even have wood pieces that come in a pack, little wood planks. Those would be perfect for this as well. Once my sign was cut and sanded down, I used the faux stain to stain it as well. And I do make two of these because I make the tree sign as well as the pumpkins. And it is the same step, so I didn't want to repeat that. But I do want to let you guys know to make two of these signs if you do it the same way. For the first sign, once I had it all stained, I'm going to be using these stencils that I got off of Amazon. They are a Christmas stencil and the price was amazing for the size and how many stencils you get. And the detail in these stencils are so amazing. I just had to share them with you guys. Amazon did have some photos of what some of the stencils looked like as if they were done already. So I do have some of those popping up on the screen, but look how gorgeous these are, you guys. These are so perfect and they work really, really well. And you guys already know if I like something, I will definitely leave the link down below in the description box so that you guys can check them out and see if you like them as well. So the link for these stencils will be down below in the description box. You guys, to be honest, I would love to do a video where I use these stencils for a bunch of different DIYs. So if that is something that you would be interested in or would watch, please let me know down in the comments because that would be so much fun. Just going through these stencils gives me so many gorgeous ideas. However, for this little sign, I'm going to be using this Farm Fresh Christmas Trees stencil. Of course, I cannot fit everything on here. And actually, I did even have to move it around a little bit to get everything that I wanted to fit on here to fit. But all I did was just place the farm fresh where I wanted it, used my white chalk paint and a foam brush from Dollar Tree, and I just stippled that on, let that dry, and then I'm going to place the trees up a little bit closer towards the farm fresh than it actually is on the stencil add some white chalk paint to that as well. And then I do the same with the Christmas trees where, well, the word Christmas trees is I just move that up and I start adding the white paint filling that stencil in. And you guys look how amazing those stencils worked out. And I really thought maybe there was gonna be some bleeding because they the price was just so great and you do get so many. And for that price, they're really big. So I was just really surprised by how well they actually worked. And here is where I do decide to kind of cut the sign down just a little bit so I didn't have that much excess on the side. Then I use my zip sander to sand the sign down quite a bit on all of the sides just to give it this more of a like rustic farmhouse distressed vibe. And here is how the Farm Fresh Christmas tree sign looks once it is finished. 
And for the fall sign, like I said earlier, I did the same thing to that piece of wood, stained it so that we have our sign, and then I used the fall stencils also off of Amazon. These are also so gorgeous, and there's so many DIYs that you could do with them, and again, they are for an absolute great price. Just like with the Christmas stencils, Amazon did also have a few pictures of these stencils as completed projects, so as those stencils pop up, I will have those pictures popping up as well so that you can kind of get the feel of what they look like as a completed project. And I will have links down below in the description box for both the Christmas and the fall stencils. If you do not know how to find the description box, all you have to do is click on the title to the video and the description box should pop up. You might have to click see more in order to see links or any other details, but the title should make the description box pop right up for you. Of course, for the fall sign, I chose the Farm Fresh Pumpkins stencil, and I just stenciled that on just like I did the Christmas one. I did choose to do the pumpkin and the greenery, except instead of the pumpkin word, just because I personally liked the look of that better. I also went ahead and sanded the edges, and I love the way that these signs turned out. For the welcome banner up at the top of our market stand, I'm using this burlap banner that I had gotten at Dollar Tree. It was in the wedding section. I really like that lace looking detail on there. It is really pretty. And you also get a really long piece of jute twine with it so that you can create the banner. So you also do get quite a few of these burlap pieces. It says 12, but I swear there was way more than 12 there. I should have counted, but I didn't. But let me tell you, you get a lot for $1.25, so it is definitely worth it. To quickly make the banner, I folded those burlap pieces in half. Then I just started drawing triangle shapes that I thought would look good for a little welcome banner. And I just traced them out with my pen and then used some scissors, which were horribly dull. I definitely need to get new scissors. And I cut those triangles out. I cut out enough triangles until I could spell out the word welcome, so I cut out seven of those triangles total, and then I used these Dollar Tree sticker letters. They fit on these little banner pieces, absolutely perfect, and I just went ahead and started spelling out the word welcome, sticking those stickers right down onto those burlap pieces. Once I had the word welcome all spelled out, I cut off a piece of that jute twine that originally came with the banner set and I taped it down on my desk so that I could grab each individual triangle piece and add a little bit of hot glue up at the top of the banner and I start gluing them down, spelling out the word welcome and for whatever reason, I did not use my detail glue gun here and I used my glue gun that shoots out a whole bunch of hot glue. So if you have a detail glue gun, just use that because the least amount of glue, the better. Now I attach the banner to each corner on the roof just by simply feeding the jute twine through the hole that was on that metal plaque and then you just tie it in a knot and you can have it hang as much or as little as you would like just by making the jute twine looser or tighter. Once the banner was tied on, I just cut off the excess on either side with my scissors and you have this adorable welcome banner. It does look really cute without the signs, but if you would like the signs, all you have to do is use these fastener dots from Dollar Tree. They are Velcro, and two of them will stick together. They have kind of like a corresponding Velcro piece that will stick to it. And all I did was take those two pieces, stick them together, then I take each set and I place it on the corner of one of the signs. And then I stick the sign to the market stand, and the Velcro piece that is meant to stay on the stand will stay on the stand and then the piece that is meant to stay on the sign will stay on the sign. I know it's super confusing to hear like somebody say it, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing because it definitely makes it a lot easier. Now that the fastener dots that we need are on the market stand, I just take some more of the fastener dots and I stick them onto the fastener dots that already are on the market stand. And this is exactly what I did with the first sign and then I stuck it to the market stand. And the ones that needed to stay on the market stand stayed on the market stand. And again, the ones that's needed to stay on the sign stayed on the sign. So now you have Velcro on both signs and as well as on the market stand. So sorry about that, you guys. Then I add some floral foam just as a space filler. 
And for the fall side, I add some Spanish moss and raffia and pumpkins. And here is how this DIY turned out. Look at this, you guys. I have seen a few creators do these with the small Dollar Tree crates and they turned out so adorable. I just had to make one on a bigger scale and I love, love, love how this turned out. I would also love to know what you guys think of this DIY down in the comments. This DIY is another DIY that does not necessarily have to be just for fall and Christmas. You could, again, leave the signs out and then you could put whatever you would like for every season and every holiday. Or you could also make a sign for each season that is interchangeable and you could use that and just change out the signs as the seasons change. Now you guys know how much I love fall, but something about these Christmas trees just really get me in the cozy winter vibes. I love this DIY with the Christmas trees. All I did was add some faux snow down inside and then added the Dollar Tree Christmas trees in a bunch of different varieties and sizes. And this is absolutely gorgeous. This DIY is definitely by far my favorite, so I had to save the best for last. I'm using one of these 18 inch pieces of wood from Dollar Tree, as well as three Sherwin-Williams five gallon paint stir sticks. I started by cutting the handles off of the paint stir sticks just by using my miter shears at first, but that was quite difficult. So for the next step of cutting, I needed to cut this paint stir stick in half. So I just used a marker and marked the halfway mark and instead of using my miter shears, I'm using my little mini saw. This thing is so cute. You guys know I love this saw so much and it works so well. I mean, you can cut a Jenga block like butter. So I cut those down so that they are both the same size. Then I'm going to take the 18 inch piece of wood and the paint stir stick that I only cut the handle off of. Again, you're going to cut the handle off of all three of the paint stir sticks. Then I just take one of the paint stir sticks, add some super glue, wood glue, as well as some hot glue for immediate hold. And then I glue it right to the center of that 18 inch wood piece. I do want to mention, I will have a link down below in the description box for the little mini saw. I personally got it off of Amazon, but you can get it at lots of hardware stores like Home Depot, Harbor Freight, or even places like Walmart will have something similar. I personally like shopping on Amazon because with me being an above knee amputee and not having a prosthetic leg, I walk with crutches and it is really hard for me to get out and about to the stores. Anyways, back to the craft. So I take the paint stir stick that I cut in half and I start gluing it to either side of the paint stir stick that I glued on top of the 18 inch wood piece. Once I have the sides glued on, I start adding the super glue wood glue as well as hot glue. And I do get the super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree and it works amazing. I add that to the top of the sides and then glue the third paint stir stick on top. To make this even sturdier, you could use a glue like E6000. I use the Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks. They work phenomenal, but I did want to try and make sure it was a little bit more sturdy. So I was just going to shoot a few brad nails inside the frame, but I did not realize I was out of brad nails. So instead I take a Dollar Tree skewer stick and I just measure it where each of the corners are on the frame and then I cut it down to individual pieces, which I needed four of those pieces. I start adding some hot glue onto each one of those little dowel rod pieces. I'm not sure if they were dowel rods or skewer sticks. I believe it was a skewer stick, but either way, a Dollar Tree dowel rod will work as well. And I add enough hot glue so that it will adhere to both of the paint stir sticks when I place it up in the corner on each four corners so that it really adheres all of the pieces of the frame together. Now that my frame is built, I use my black chalk paint and the chalk paint, I don't think I mentioned what I'm using. It is the folk art black chalk paint. It is a very, very dark black. Normally I only have to use one coat and that's exactly what I did with this project as well. I just did one coat on the entire frame. 
at Dollar Tree, they've had these picture hanging kits for quite some time now and they really are nice. They have different size nails and wire and just different things that you can use to hang pictures with. And for $1.25, I think it really is a great deal. Also inside this kit are these little loop screw hooks. I'm so sorry, the name is totally slipping my mind. Let me know down in the comments if you know the name and I will try and remember it this time. However, I'm going to take four of these hooks. You can use more or less depending on the size of bulb you're going to use or how many Christmas bulbs you're going to hang. As you could see, I just turned the frame upside down and started screwing one of the hooks on either end making sure that I have it spaced out evenly or as even as I could get it by eyeballing it. You could definitely measure this as well, but I just went ahead with eyeballing and screwed four of those hooks in total. You could leave the hooks gold if you would like, but because I'm displaying this in my home this year, I don't have any gold in my home decor, so I used the black chalk paint that I used for the frame to paint the hooks as well. Now the frame is complete and we can start decorating. You, of course, can use whatever, any kind of Christmas bulbs that you would like. You can use sentimental ones. I think that would be an adorable idea to display any sentimental Christmas bulbs that you might have. Maybe your children's little baby Christmas ornaments that you have. I know I definitely have one for each one of my children. But either way, what I decided to do was take these. This is a pack of Christmas ornaments that I got from Dollar Tree and the tops were gold. So again, I did decide to take the black chalk paint and paint those black as well. Then I'm going to take the black cotton twine. Once again, this is also from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start tying pieces and I did not measure the twine. I just made sure it was longer than what I needed, but I just simply tied the cotton twine onto the Christmas ornament and then I made sure it had a nice long tail or piece of the twine hanging off and I cut off the excess. And I did this with two of the red and white Christmas ornaments that I got from Dollar Tree. The next two ornaments I will be using are these really neatly shaped matte black Christmas bulbs that I got in a pack from Walmart. It was a really nice size pack for a great price, at least in my opinion. And just like with the Dollar Tree bulbs, I added the black cotton twine so that I could hang the bulbs on my frame. To hang the bulbs on the frame, I lay the frame on its side and then I just pull up the cotton twine and place the bulb where I would like it to hang. And once I like the position that it is in, I just tie the cotton twine right to that hook that we screwed in at the top of the frame. You could use anything that you would like to hang your Christmas bulbs. I think using fishing wire would be so neat because it would also make it look like the bulbs are floating in the air. When hanging my Christmas bulbs, I alternated the styles and then I also made sure that they were different lengths as well. You can make them hang all at the same level if you would like, but I made the black bulbs hang a little bit lower than the red and white bulbs. And all I did was simply just tie them where I would like them to hang onto the hooks. Once I had all my Christmas bulbs hanging on the frame where I would like them, I want to add some greenery on top and I really love the greenery that is on this grape vine garland that I got from Walmart. I don't remember the price but I do know that it had to have been a decent price because I don't buy anything if it is horribly priced. So I know it was definitely worth the price and I really like the fact that the greenery pieces are individually put into that grape vine garland so that you could pull those out. They are glued so you kind of have to wiggle them but they do come out individually. I used four of those greenery picks and I used two at first placing them so that the ends are intertwined together and then I just take those two and place them up at the top of my frame, making sure that I can get it as centered as possible. I don't worry about the parts that are kind of falling down because I'm going to place them where I would like later on. But I do want the glue, the 
greenery to stay in place. So I use some hot glue and just glue it right in at the center. Then I take some of the other stems and I add some hot glue on the end and place it up underneath the first set of greenery so that the greenery is fuller and we also have longer greenery on the sides. Now that I have all four of the stems glued on, I'm going to start gluing the greenery where I would like it to be. So I just pick up the greenery on either side and I add a few lines of hot glue and glue the greenery down, but I do let a few of the strands hang down. I do not glue all of the greenery, just enough to make sure that there is some on top. Like I had mentioned, I let a few pieces fall and hang as I was gluing the greenery that I wanted to stay at the top of the frame down. So then I can just take those pieces that are hanging and I just add hot glue here and there, placing those greenery pieces exactly where I want them to hang on the frame. Now that my greenery is where I would like it, I add some hot glue to the center of the greenery and add this buffalo check bow that I made a while back but never used. I wanted to incorporate a little bit more white to go with the white that's already in the ornaments that I used. So I used the bell off of this door hanger. I liked the size of it and the fact that it was a matte white. So I just cut it off and then hot glued it right to the bottom of my bow. Now I didn't really care for how you could see hot glue in the greenery back behind the bow. So I just took another little piece of that buffalo check ribbon that I had used to make the bow and this was made with Dollar Tree ribbon and I wish I had the footage of me making the bow. I do believe I made it last year but anyways all I did was cut a piece off and then hot glue it to the back of the bow so that it has a more finished look. Dollar Tree has so many different berries that you can use. I wanted to use the white berries off of this greenery from Dollar Tree. They do also have a red berry greenery just like this. So it was really easy to just pull these little foam berries off. And I just pulled enough off so that I could take a few and just hot glue them where I would like to up in the greenery. I didn't do too many, just a few to really bring out the white in the project. Once I had enough berries to my liking glued on, this DIY was done. Like I said earlier, this is my favorite DIY out of today's video and I am just absolutely obsessed with it. I think it is so gorgeous. And again, if you have any ornaments that mean something to you, how beautiful would this be to display them? I truly hope you all enjoyed these DIYs as much as I enjoyed sharing them with you. If you would like, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would love to have you in our crafty family and hit the bell notification if you would like to be notified when I post new uploads. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!